Good morning. Uh, my name is Will Yeldell. I'm a solution architect with the North American Solution Center, part of SAP. And I'm here to introduce uh, Thomas Teig, the president and CEO of Direct Relief International. Uh, Thomas is going to go over basically how Direct Relief International uses the logistics functions within SAP ERP to distribute, manage, and facilitate the delivery of key medical supplies to facilities all over the world. Um, we're going to show a brief video that was put together a couple of years back that will give you a better foundation for what DRI actually does worldwide. And then Thomas has a brief presentation that he's going to do. And then we'll take some questions and answers. And at the end of the 20 minutes, we're going to go over to a discussion area over there. And you can come up and ask any questions that you were not able to ask during the presentation. So with that being said, Mr. Thomas Tig from DRI. Can run the video? The video? There we go. Port of Prince, Haiti. This man and woman urgently need medical attention. They've just been in a fight over her water. He pushed her down. Ten other men jumped to her defense. The medical supplies to treat them come to their tent city via truck. This is free aid from Direct Relief International. Direct Relief was established over 60 years ago and is based in Santa Barbara, California. It's not a household name because it doesn't spend money on advertising. But this year alone, it gave out half a billion dollars in medicine and supplies. They are known for their speed and efficiency. What's interesting is fast, fast, so we can uh, does this one, I ordered them this morning, and now I already get them. Haiti's devastating earthquake was many, many months ago, but the situation here is still dire. Homes, shops, even the presidential palace are rubble, still waiting to be cleared. More than one million people live in tent cities. There are fights here almost daily but what overwhelms the meager medical facilities are diseases, accidents, pregnancies, and malnutrition. Medicine and supplies are scarce. Direct Relief International must be strategic. We've gone ahead and tried to anticipate what could happen, what illnesses will, will result. Direct Relief sends aid to 32 clinics in Haiti and at the same time supplies thousands of clinics in 62 countries. The logistics are staggering. To stay organized, they use software from SAP. It's helped Direct Relief stay on the Forbes list of the most efficient charities. One of the exciting things about the SAP software is that we can track a bottle of pills from right here in the warehouse through distribution right into the hands of a doctor at one of our partner facilities in Haiti. The tracking process starts when Direct Relief asks manufacturers to donate new medical goods. The supplies are brought to Direct Relief's main warehouses near Santa Barbara. We've had about 10,000 SKUs or stock keeping units that we manage. These are prescription medications, needles of different gauges, sutures of different gauges. It's important to be precise when you're dealing with prescription medications. You know, the system that SAP has built in makes that possible, which was not possible before. When a clinic orders supplies, the SAP software makes the picking, packing, and shipping out efficient. But what keeps the donations coming in is transparency. Anyone can access Direct Relief's website to see interactive maps that detail delivery of aid. It's very important for us to be able to demonstrate, here's what we did with your money, here's how it helped. And here's literally where it went. Always prepared, Direct Relief is already stockpiling supplies in Haiti for potential hurricane victims. Well, thank you. Uh, and thank you to SAP, and thank you to the web audience, and thanks to those of you who came. I just had a few things that uh, the film highlighted a little bit for Direct Relief's operations. Functionally, we, we serve a distribution function 
um, for people who can't pay. And not many businesses go around trying to do market research on people who cannot buy their goods or services. But in a sense, that is um, that leaves out a lot of people who are just not viable uh, commercial consumers. And we realize that having the tools that are used for commercial purposes are absolutely needed to define the non-commercial market just as well as it is for the commercial market. And when you're at a functional level, when you're doing the distribution, the logistics, the financing, and, and the reporting, functionally it's exactly the same. So for us, I think the, the whole implementation of SAP was designed to make a difference in this uh, non-commercial activity that needs the efficiencies as much as anything does. So, um, as you all know that, you know, we all know that information flow uh, drives workflow. You can't just go without having information upon which to act. And um, so that's a big part of the dilemma in emergencies uh, and just in general, when very little is known about people other than that they are poor, it doesn't tell you what to do. Um, particularly for us, because it's a very specialized highly regulated industry when you're dealing with prescription medications in 70 countries and here in the United States, really thanks to SAP, we've become the only nonprofit organization ever to be licensed to distribute prescription medications in all 50 U.S. states. Um, one of the things that we've learned over 64 years is that there's a big problem uh, with emergencies, obviously, is that there's an urgent need to act fast and an absence of information on which to act, right? So if you put those things together, you get a lot of waste and chaos, which happened significantly in Haiti, where people saw, there's a big problem in Haiti, let's send something to Haiti, uh, which you would never do. You'd usually wait for an order, um, wait for a distribution plan, and make sure it was gonna have the intended effect. Um, that's what we did in Haiti and continue to do in Haiti. Um, we just realized that if you have, even in a chaotic situation, you still need the information flow to drive your workflow. So that's the rationale for having uh, implemented a system that enables you to make some sense of the chaotic and, and organize the information as it comes in in a way that you can, can make a difference. So if you get better information, uh, better managed, in our case, we help more people. There's a profitability analog to it. Um, it would be more sales at lower cost, but in our world, since the, uh, the people really aren't paying customers, I think the, the metric is really how many people you can help as precisely as possible in the shortest time frame possible, which is directly analogous to really any business, I think. Uh, and also understanding who your customer is, although they can't pay, you know, if people can pay for something, uh, there's no shortage of people who are gonna try to understand what their preferences are, and the market will serve them well. A huge dilemma for our world is that the two to two and a half billion people who aren't viable consumers, who live on less than $2 a day, we don't know much about them. So one of the things we're trying to do with SAP and the tools is really bring that same level of scrutiny to bear uh, where the efficiencies are most needed, where there's less money, you want to be more targeted with the resources that you have. This is almost like a, a, a of the public good efforts of government, trying to understand exactly what is needed where, deliver the services as uh, efficiently as possible, it makes these scarce dollars go further in poor areas. So, um, let me see what, again, we put in the full, uh, we've done a full implementation which was tough for a group of 55 people. Uh, now it's about a half a billion dollar program um, serving over 20 to 25 million customers who are relying on the services that we provide. Um, so the ERP uh, system, the ECC, runs our internal logistics, uh, warehouse, uh, finances, distribution, warehouse management, and then the CRM and all of the business intelligence, the reporting, the crystal reports, uh, it's all web enabled under the NetWeaver portal, but um, it allows us to, they're not really external users, but external parties. So we, we need to get tight behind the curtain, make sure that we're optimizing everything we can do, but also make the information that's relevant to the people, both the companies, the healthcare companies that make donations to us, and people who need help from groups like Direct Relief, that they have an ability to understand, come through the web, and see what may be available for them. So, um, again, we. 
a big problem with a nonprofit, a big challenge, <clears throat> if you're not measured by profitability like a typical commercial enterprise, you still have to ensure value for money. I mean, people are giving you money, and one of the big disconnects in nonprofits uh, that you all know is that typically if you buy something, you make a value judgment whether you got your money's worth, right? If you buy a $4 cup of coffee and you don't like it, you will not pay $4 again. Nonprofits are inherently challenging in that they disconnect the, the buyer from the consumer, right? You almost have a third party buyer. Party A gives money to an organization to provide services to party B. So it's, a, it's really important to, uh, there's a lot of skepticism, some of it justified, some of it less so. So what happened with my money? I gave you money, Thomas. Did value, was value obtained for the money that was provided? Having the tools to report precisely and show outcomes, who was helped, what the, the co dollar cost per unit of activity was, and literally where the medications went, um, is really important to instill confidence in us as a public service organization. And really it would have been impossible in, in the type of industry we're in, pharmaceutical products, heavily regulated by every country, regulated by uh, worldwide bodies, and here in the United States, regulated by each of the 50 states, uh, as well as an overriding federal regulatory scheme, compliance alone is very uh, challenging. So we would not have been able to do it without a system like SAP. And th uh, thankfully, SAP does exist, so we were able to implement it, and, uh, and it's been terrific. So these are some of the tools that we, we use. Um, just to generate efficiencies, leverage the resources that we have, and maximize health improvements for people, particularly in a resource-constrained environment, as you see, um, as governments contract and businesses cleave off where the areas of profit, profitability are, there leaves a big gap for nonprofits to fill. Things that aren't inherently profitable and that governments won't do, that's why nonprofit organizations exist. Just because you can't make money doing it, it seems weird in a place like this, there are still <laughs> There may not be a good business reason to do certain things, uh, but there are compelling human reasons to do them. And when you do them, I think the, uh, having the tools that have been proven and tested and worked out like SAP make all the difference in the world. So in a nutshell, that's what we do. That's how we've done it. And I'll let uh, Will pepper me with any questions that may be of interest before you fall asleep in 20 minutes. Thank well, you. I think the next slide is what I wanted to move to, because this is the, the, uh, the one that fascinates me the most. Basically. As I understand, this is where a given clinic or a given someone who needs need would come into on your website, would find a location, can find what you have in inventory, right. and request replenishment from direct relief. Right. So what this is, is uh, uh, these are icons that represent a, an individual facility in Haiti. And it's, not, it's interactive. If you go to our website, you can actually toggle along the top um, the icons and they're sized relative to what has gone there. So you, if you pick one facility and pull it out, you can see exactly what categories of supplies have gone to that facility. So this is basically pulling from SAP inventory, uh, our inventory system, <clears throat> marrying it with the distribution, and then having a powerful data visualization tool that lays over it. So you can literally see what the aid distribution was. There's a lot of news reports about Look at all this stuff that's just been sent to the airport in Port-au-Prince, which was true. If you send something to a country uh, and it lands at the airport, the country doesn't know what to do with it. So uh, in our case, we, you know, we take an order, we've uh, approved all these facilities, and we don't send it until we know there's an end user on the other side who can put to good use. And it's really important, someone can't say, send whatever you've got. If you're doing a particular type of surgery that requires a particular gauge of suture, we have to know that or it's just a complete waste of money and time. And in emergencies, one of the other things is that it clogs up the distribution arteries. People who send uh, unneeded materials to Port-au-Prince after the earthquake, uh, at their own cost, with, a, with great intention, that material with no plan associated with it ended up clogging up the already compromised distribution channels to get out to some of these facilities that had a lot of patients who needed help. So again, the data visualization that you, you can't have a good map without good underlying data. And so a lot of groups in Haiti, we've work, been working with the government, uh, including the, the whole country's director of pharmacy, and they said, well, yeah, we want one of these maps for us, and we had to explain, you can't have a good map without good data, right? It gets down to the bottle level to see what has gone where, 
but it's really important so you can actually, again, call it market research, call it uh, distribution reporting. They're both aligned. You want to see where the demand is, the specific demand for specific products, and be able to deliver it. And the cool thing about SAP that we've learned is so much information that you, it requires precision, it handles scale, but you can then visualize it in a way that's actually very intuitive so any user can, uh, can come on and see what we've done. We've done a similar map for the United States where we're working with about a thousand nonprofit clinics that serve 20 million Americans, low income uninsured Americans. The same, the same case, just because um, people can't pay for it. Uh, I, I always think you should be more efficient in those resource constrained environments, not, um, you know, passion doesn't really count for much at the end of the day if you're not going to deliver value for money. So that's what we're trying to do and we're really uh, thankful that the tools exist and they've been perfected every day in the fierce competition of the commercial marketplace to repurpose some of those tools for the non-commercial marketplace that consists of two billion people is a really important thing. And, um, and we do know how to do this. I think SAP and a lot of you businesses have figured out all the specific functional areas that need to be precisely targeted to bring those tools to bear on these places that aren't inherently profit, profit making is a really important thing for us as a species. So. Um, but the maps are cool too, people understand. My mom understands what we do now, now that she can see it on a map. And, uh, and I guess the way that, that SAP helps expedite the delivery of the products to the people in need, when a user goes on to, their, to the site and says, I need a case of penicillin, if that's what they're allocated, then that generates an actual pick order in your warehouse to ship to this facility. So it goes out, does, tells the operator where to go at the warehouse level, how much to pick, where to ship it, so the whole fulfillment process is kicked off from possibly a thousand miles away right. by a clinic operator saying, I need penicillin. Exactly. Yeah, at, again, at a functional level, um, the, business is, the, the business side is, the, at the purpose level, it's much different, the, you know, uh, what we're doing. At the functional level, it's exactly the same. You have to take an order, you have to optimize the picking, packing, wrapping, and shipping, and also the, can, the loading of a container, and the shipping cost to kind of manage that sort of thing, but it is driven by um, ultimately an order and an end user who's a, basically a non-paying customer who needs help. Uh, we do a lot of international sourcing. Direct Relief runs the largest distribution program of HIV rapid test kits in the world. That goes to about 60 countries. Uh, we don't touch it, but it's all managed virtually through 3PLs with a high level of precision and the ability uh, for everything we do to execute a recall notification, if it goes out to 60 countries, we have to be able to uh, make sure if there's a problem with the product that we know exactly where the bad batch was so we could recall it. And that is something a lot of businesses don't have to do, but, uh, but we do. And SAP certainly, it would not be possible without those tools. You also made a very unique observation weeks ago when we spoke, was that you were using CRM to actually manage a customer base that nobody had ever managed before, which was the, the, the the people who are not on the radar, not the end consumers, not the true customers, but the people who are in need, are in need that you supply. Right. How are you using CRM to really manage those, those folks? Well, I think a lot of, you know, the United States is a good example of this. There are uh, people here who live here understand that there's some big hospital networks that are kind of systems where the information from the patient records, the billing records, are all pretty self-contained. 20 million people receive their care at these locally run nonprofit uh, community health centers and clinics. There are about 8,000 of them in the United States and they're kind of like ma and pa grocery stores before we had the big chain drug stores and you could bring all the efficiencies. So they are off the grid. They do not have big standing contracts with the big medical distributors because there's not enough money in there to make it attractive. But if you look at them collectively and you see that there are 8,000, basically a deeply fragmented service delivery market, and they cannot benefit from the tools that exist in our own country at a time when it's a fierce political issue and people who can actually get in and see a doctor can get a prescription and then go and can't get it filled because no one's negotiated their rate, right? So um, what we've been able to do is, again, just like in Haiti, identify each one of these locally licensed uh, organizations in all 50 states, put them on our grid so they can have a way to express the unmet needs of their patients in a very precise way and then we can fulfill that. Uh, FedEx has been a great corporate partner and has done 18,000 deliveries within the United States free of charge. So we could have provi we've provided over 25 million prescriptions to people 
who were sick or hurt and otherwise would not have received them at no cost to the taxpayers. It's all privately funded. So that's the kind of efficiency and speed. If you work with these best of breed commercial tools, they work. I mean, that's why people buy them for business. They also work uh, in other arenas like nonprofits. So we're thrilled that SAP understood it and put the time and effort into helping us serve better, decide better, and do it faster. Um, it's not any rocket science to take these best of breed tools that work in business and say, oh, they work for other things too. But um, after going through a, a lot of uh, an effort, a request for proposals with all the big uh, vendors, SAP really did emerge as something that was uh, kind of intimidating at first, but ultimately worked very well for us to do uh, decide better, run better, and do it faster. So, well, Thomas, that's a great story. Absolutely great story. Um, we're going to move over to the question and answer area back over here to the side. If you want to come over and ask either one of us more questions, I advise you ask him. He's a lot more interesting than I am. Also, don't forget to fill out the question card and give us your comments on today's session. We'd love to hear what you have to think. And Thomas, thank you so much for your time. And thank you very thank much. Thank you for attending. Appreciate it. Thank you to the web audience as well.